Hey team, Connor from HPA here. Let's see what's been happening around HPA the last couple of weeks. So if we just jump onto my computer screen here, you'll see I have a photo of our Bamboo Lab X1E, which is our brand new 3D printer. Uh, so we've just got this coming yesterday and I was just setting it up this morning and working towards doing our first prints with it. Um, so this printer has come recommended as kind of the best affordable printer. It's about, um, in this case, it's about $5,000 uh, New Zealand dollars. So I don't know where that ends up being around two to three thousand uh, US dollars. Um, but it's very similar to the X1C or X1 Carbon as well, which is a little bit cheaper. There's just a few differences between the two. Uh, one of the key ones being the heated chamber, which for our case here in Queenstown, because it gets pretty cold here in winter, and this is in the workshop, we thought that would be a worthwhile upgrade. Um, but this printer, yeah, supposed to be pretty much set and forget, no tedious bed leveling every time you need to print something and coming back to the first layer of the 3D print pulled up off the bed in a big mess of spaghetti. It also has lots of features like um, it can detect the uh, adherence I guess of that first layer to the bed and it can see if that's gone wrong it'll automatically pause or stop the print. Um, but it also allows for printing up to 320 degrees Celsius for the nozzle temperature which allows um, the use of a lot of materials uh, like carbon fiber reinforced plastic. So not only will it be great for quickly creating prototypes, but it'll also be really good for making final parts that can withstand the abuse of motorsport. Um, the use in an engine bay, for example, little brackets and things like that. Um, on a turbocharged car that was probably kind of pushing it around that temperature but on a naturally aspirated even a race car um, should be some useful parts that we can get out of that and will be fine for final parts not just prototypes. Uh, you can see on the top of it here this is the AMS which kind of just sits on top of the printer and you can see at the moment there's three um, rolls of filament in there. Um, you can put a fourth one in as well, so the printer will automatically understand what rolls of filament are in there and it can use those different ones automatically throughout the printing process or you just don't have to unload and reload filaments so often to do different types. So um, yeah, we're going to be using this over the, getting familiar with it over the next few weeks and we'll keep you updated on how that goes and then in the future when we do 3D printed related content, um, this is primarily what we'll be using. We also have a Creality CR10S Pro, which is just next to it out of frame here. Um, as a kind of cheaper, more accessible option as well that will will show some stuff of that. So if there's anything in particular that you'd want to see on the 3D printing side of things, um, yeah, let us know and we'll try to cover that in the future. Moving on from that, um, a similar topic, if we just jump onto the overhead camera. Uh, in the, this case, not 3D printer, but 3D scanner. So recently we've been uh, getting hold of a few different 3D scanners in the more affordable price range, so under say 2000 US uh, dollars. We've got two of us right now that I'll just show you really quickly and we're also getting a, another few as well. So we currently have a Creality, uh, sorry, uh, Peel2S scanner, which is great for scanning small detailed parts but it's quite limited when it comes to scanning big surfaces or like engine bays or bodywork. Um, so we're kind of looking at a few different options in the market uh, for something that is good for the likes of scanning an engine bay, for example. And um, while it might not be as accurate or higher resolution, it'll still provide a really usable result. And um, the bigger f uh, field of view that it covers allows it to scan and track uh, a lot easier. So this is one of the options here. This is the Revo Point Range 2. Um, so I've done a few trial runs of this and it's done pretty well relatively for its kind of price point. Um, one of the cool things I liked about this is you can just connect this with Wi-Fi to your phone um, and don't need really any cables other than one going to the little power bank that's in the back here and you can just hold it go up to the vehicle and scan it all just through your phone and then you can even process the scan in the app in your phone and then send that or airdrop that to your computer and then open it in CAD from there 
or whatever you plan on using the scan for. So that's quite a good option for that. And then the other one I've got over here is the uh, Shining 3D Einstar. So um, this one's a little bit more expensive than the other one, um, but tends to, from the experience I've had so far, it does definitely show that extra expense kind of in the quality and, and the ease of use. The kind of downside with this, I guess, is you need to plug it into the USB uh, port of your computer and then also into the power source at the wall. Um, so there's a lot more cords and cables and also the processing capability or the kind of grunt of your computer needs to be significantly more but um, yeah so far this has been really really good even uh, scanning something that our PL2S did uh, was scanning an engine for example fully dressed with manifolds on it um, and the PL2S really struggles with certain things when it gets a little bit bigger and this just made really short work of it and the results were pretty good um, in terms of accuracy definitely very usable so yeah, we're going to be showing some more of these scanners in the future, more content and also a course that we're working on at the moment uh, with these and then also kind of higher end scanners as well. But we're trying to kind of cover every part of the market we can. So these are the two we've got. So that's the Revo Point Range 2. This is the uh, Shining 3D Einstar. We've also got a Creality CR Scan Otter on the way and the 3D Makers Pro uh, Moose as well. So we'll be kind of showing those in the next few weeks and making some content around them and of course showing you guys how to use them and on your automotive and race car projects. Um, so we'll just move on to that, uh, on from that to our motorsport plumbing system course. So this is the uh, most recent course that just went up last week uh, yeah last week so we've just launched this um, it's 129 US dollars here um, and just while this is playing I'll give you a little bit of a rundown of what's included in the course so um, we start out by covering the fundamentals of the different plumbing systems uh, in an automotive context so that might be uh, the, the plumbing systems we cover are the intake uh, intake air and ch uh, charge air systems. We also cover the oil and coolant systems, uh, the fuel system, brake system, and clutch as well because it's so similar to the brake system, as well as the power steering system. So pretty much covering every plumbing system in the vehicle except for the exhaust system. Um, yeah, and like I said, we cover the fundamental knowledge, so we give you an overview of each system and how it works. Uh, and we also talk about the materials used in plumbing that system as well. And then we cover some routing and heat management considerations. As we know in motorsport, heat management is one of the biggest challenges and it has some significant effects on the plumbing system um, to be able to control that temperature and, and usually keep the heat out of the plumbing materials so we don't damage them, but also out of the fluid that we're conveying in the plumbing because um, that has some serious kind of lead-on effects there um, in each of the systems. And then most importantly, we talk about the sizing of the plumbing system for each application as well. So some typical sizes that you'll be able to use um, kind of starting points for working on your systems. From there, we move into all the different components uh, used in automotive plumbing systems and motorsport systems. Um, so things like pipe clamps, V-bands, for example, Wiggins clamps. Uh, we also talk about, yeah, kind of cover all the bases from hose ends, uh, braided hose, hard lines, compression fittings, um, even down to gaskets and making O-rings and the likes of that, which we also cover in our practical skills section. So we take all that knowledge and show you how to apply it and learn some practical skills so you can design and build a plumbing system of your own for your vehicle. So again, we talk about uh, making braided hoses and lines, um, using hose ends, making O-rings and gaskets, hard lines, uh, and then we also talk about the likes of um, pressure testing, boost leak testing, and so on. There's some practical skills down here shown in the curriculum. Um, 
yeah, so covers all the bases there as well as some common issues in troubleshooting with um, those systems. And at the end, when you finish the course, you can request your uh, download a certificate at the end to show that you've completed it. And uh, we want you to be able to purchase with complete confidence. So with all our courses, we offer a 60-day no questions asked money back guarantee. If you decide that the course isn't uh, right for you for some reason, just flick us an email and we'll sort that out. If you like that video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you're subscribed. We release a new video every week. And if you like free stuff, we've got a great deal for you. Click the link in the description to claim your free spot to our next live lesson.